สวัสดีครับบางทีมันยากที่จะไปไกลกว่าความสามารถเพราะเราไม่รู้ว่าเราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ในกระดาษที่เราอยู่ใน The reference that you see in architectural magazines, in the internet, in real estate flyers, or are you just going to stand there, let it sink in, and let your heart decide, without thinking of what your friends or the public may say? And when I say beautiful, I, I mean something that touches your heart, not just. Wow, cool! Cool is just a trend. You know, cool is trends. They come and go. Over time, they have no substance, and eventually, they get boring. So, after having been in this business of designing and building houses for many years, let me tell you what my reference is. My reference is a smile. Why a smile? What kind of a smile? I'm talking about the smile that arises from within when something touches you that you really like. The smile is something that creates a connection or has been created through a connection. When we connect to a building. The building that is in front of you, and a smile arises. It means the chances that we will have a good life in this house are very high. It's taken me some while to really define what our architecture studio stands for, what our values are. But as of this moment, there are sustainability, functionality, and smiles. And the smile is the really interesting thing here because it means it's a design. It is something has been created that you like, and if you like something, you take care of it. Thus, sustainability is enhanced. And if you like something, you will really use it fully. So functionality comes into play. In today's architecture, the Bauhaus ideology. Is like a religion to most architects. Bauhaus is an architectural ideology that was created by uh, some young European architects in the 1920s, over 100 years ago, and they were very gifted with language and were writing fierce texts and pamphlets. They're called manifestos. Against anything that they regarded as establishment, they wanted to change everything, and they were focusing on one word as their arch enemy. It's a French word, bourgeois. Bourgeois for them represented everything that was had character, was lovely, was lively, uh, colorful, charismatic, beautiful, artistic. All of this, bad taste. They wanted to build. Houses that were machines for living. Everything has to be square, and concrete, and steel, and as lifeless and uncharming as possible. Even art had to be machine-made. They killed the livelihoods of many artisans, craftsmanship, and artists. Everything had to be formalized, machine-made, and the life taken out of it as much as possible. That's called Bauhaus. When the Nazis raised to power, a lot of them had to emigrate to the states, and they were welcomed in the United States like the white gods from heaven in the architectural uh, community. Why? Because the Americans at that time they had no real architectural thinking. They still made 
Greek columns in front of big houses, and then this revolutionary came with these great ideas. One became dean of school of architecture at Harvard. The other one became director of the of the uh, architectural faculty in, in Chicago. They took over academia, the press, and dictated architectural taste. And their legacy remains until today. If you look into architectural magazines, and if you look at the internet platforms, if you ask the academia, this stuff will come up. Everybody will say Bauhaus is ultimate. What you see here is pure Bauhaus style. Everything has to be square, concrete, and because they are so strong in the, in the media, it's very hard to oppose this and to get out because they can just not publish your stuff. And you know they can question your reputation and all of this because the media is behind them. This is what they will publish. Everything square and concrete. Look out. This is Chiang Mai University, right? I just took this photo outside. This is Bauhaus pure concrete to the point where everyone takes this as an axiom of building. Everybody thinks, but this is the way how it has to be. This is the way how it should be. This is the only way. This is the best way. The box took over, and you not, don't even know that you're sitting in this box. So after all this, let's get back to some smiles. If you think of a holiday, the best holiday that you can think of, what comes to mind? People will think maybe of a beach, or a mountain, waterfall, a river, usually something connected with nature. Why is that? Because nature connects connects to us inside, and this connection creates some kind of happiness and some kind of peacefulness. And if we look at nature's design, we will find a lot of different designs, but what we will not find is a straight line or a square or a box. And it is these designs, everywhere we look, we, dis we find something wonderful, something, wow, this and this, lots of li little different designs. And that is why in our design studio, we like to go with nature's lines, with round lines, with flowing lines, with irregular lines, because they touch our heart. So, when my wife and I were unhappy with the schooling offerings to our children, and decided to take action and build our own school, we wanted to put as many things in one basket that we thought are missing in normal education and that are necessary for children to grow to a a happy person as possible. First one is nature. We wanted them to be close and experience this connection that can make us happy, that can make us peaceful with nature. So that for us meant a big plot of land so that children couldn't even have to run around from one building to the next, preferably barefoot so they could touch the earth. And then materials. Bamboo and earth, they're actually more functional than normal materials. The bamboo is lighter, it has a higher tensile strength in steel, it doesn't rust, it has a long life, and it's beautiful to look at, and no carbon footprint. Same with the earth. Great insulator against heat and cold, it's load-bearing, can last long, no carbon footprint. And the additional advantage of these materials is that we could use more flowing curves, rounder forms in design. They, they lend themselves to a different kind of architecture easier. And these are the lines that we respond to as human beings a lot more than squares, and especially children who are less conditioned than adults. They easily and readily respond to these lines with happiness and smiles. And here's again the functionality of the smiles. If the children like something, and they like to go to school, then they will learn easier. Our young children in the evening, they don't want to go home. In the morning, they wake their parents up to go to school early. They want to come on weekends. So they don't mind spending the day at the school. They actually love it. They learn easier, the parents are happy, teachers are happy. 
And if teachers are happy, we can easily hire good teachers, which is difficult sometimes these days. So all this comes together. Once you get the design and the, and the materials and everything right, things fall together. And when children and young adults are, have to stay and, and experience the fun and functionality of these materials, they develop a positive attitude towards natural materials and nature and environment and like to be there. But for the beings in the 21st century, especially these very difficult beings called teenagers, it is very important to place all this into their context as well, not just to push them into something they don't want to be. So we try to combine or not try it. Our purpose is to take these materials into the 21st century by combining them with technology, engineering knowledge, as much as we could. We have the best equipped science labs in schools in Thailand. We have an AI facial recognition system when you enter the school. We were the first school to implement a school-wide system for fresh air and clean air during the burning season. But this system also operates as an oxygenating system in all times because it blows fresh oxygenated air into the rooms. If you close rooms and the air condition, the oxygen level goes down. So to create the optimal room climate for learning. We have the latest technology from Samsung for air conditioning that lets the air just sickle down instead of blowing it into your neck. So we're trying to bring this into the 21st century. But at the same time, We were also asking ourselves, what else can we do? You see, once you step out of the box, suddenly you see all the other limits that you have imposed on yourself. So we were asking us, how and what does a good educational institution teach? In mainstream, there's two opinions. There's either the academics, you teach content, or you focus on the person. We wanted both. It's the 21st century. You don't have to make exclusions anymore. So, we had to combine these two systems, the, the, the traditional schools and what they call alternative schooling into one. So for academic system, we chose the IB program, International Baccalaureate program, which is the most respected and probably most difficult academic program, uh, program. But it has the advantage when you go through it, you can go to any university in the world. So our children have the freedom to choose. We want them to be part of the society and become agents of change from within. Change only comes from within. But we also wanted them to become mature uh, human beings who are happy with their life and who know how to think. That means teaching values and how the mind works. So we were lucky. We came across a very famous Buddhist monk who was also developing a system, uh, a value-based curriculum system and he recommended us to incorporate what he called uh, 12 wise habits into our curriculum. These wise habits are universal values like kindness, persistence, concentration, mindfulness in this, in this way. But the Buddha also teach, teaches how the mind works and how to control your mind in order to understand what you're doing in order to have a happy life. So we try to bring all these things together and bring them in a context that is 21st century and a context that is widely available to everybody, not just to a fringe group, not just hippies, or not just uh, the old-fashioned academics, but everything together. It was difficult in the beginning, it took a while, but now we have parents from any class of society with luxury cars, but also those who come with bicycles, we have parents uh, from South America, from Chile to China, from all parts of the world, and we get a healthy mix. So what is the line that needs crossing? And what is the focus? In my opinion, the focus is on questioning the norm, questioning established trends. Don't just follow trends, even if you like them. Look at them and look at what is good and what is bad. Take the good and make it better. 
Now, innovation happens when you bring things together that some other people don't, or that others can't see that they have anything in common. Like here, bamboo, and then these things that are called trusses. These are trusses like steel trusses. And so we had engineers calculate the trusses and put it into bamboo. That's when innovation occurs. You bring and connect things that are usually not brought together. If you go down this path, one thing will happen, opinions will arise. People will laugh at you. Everybody has an opinion on anything these days, even if they have no idea what they're talking about. So my advice, disregard the opinions, they're just hot air. They just they come and go with the wind and it's better to be a changer of opinions than to be limited by them. And if you ever get stuck with all the options, opinions and opportunities, my recommendation is look at everything that's on the table and choose whatever touches your heart and makes you smile. Thank you.